today on Be Something Wonderful, Metaphysical Manifesting Secret to Transform All Negative Conditions. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. Good morning from our studios here in Las Vegas. I have a super powerful video today. It comes from two different sessions I had that combined for an amazing uh, video. I want to talk about this client that, that watched an early video of mine, I guess maybe about a year old, where I, where I talked about this idea that the negative conditions and all of those unwanted circumstances don't really exist. It's all a lack of perception. It's all of an incomplete perception or incomplete seeing. So when you resist them, when you try to change them, when you go at them, right? When you, when you try to fix them, then you're creating them and putting them there. You're trying to get rid of something that's not there. We're going to talk about this idea. And then another client who said, Tom, I'm just feeling or, I, or I'm, in the, I'm in this state of just unconditional gratitude. This idea, remember, gratitude, the, the true, beyond the 3D emotion of gratitude and appreciation, where you feel gratitude and appreciation for things, is your core vibration, your state of being of love. Your core essence is gratitude. So we're going to talk about this idea because she's attracting everything in her life but not doing anything, not intending anything. She's just in this sort of carefree state of gratitude. We're going to talk about both of these ideas today and more. Remember, all negative, unwanted, and undesired conditions, whether physical or non-physical, in other words, these changing appearances, people, events, and circumstances, those appearances, or thoughts, feelings, images, and sensations, appear as a lack of awareness of your true nature of who you really are as source or awareness itself. That's what they are. They're a lack of awareness, right? The lack of awareness or non-existence is impossible. So lack is impossible in any form. Do you see why these negative conditions and this whole idea of unworthiness, feeling unworthy, feeling lack, feeling doubt. They're not there. You create this through your incomplete seeing, through your incomplete perception. In other words, from your lack of awareness of your true nature as source or I am. Right? That lack of awareness, though, doesn't really exist because you are awareness. And non-existence is impossible, so lack is impossible. Do you see it? Lack really is impossible. It's an experience, but it's not reality. Right? You are the awareness, so it's impossible to lack awareness. You can only have that experience that you lack it. And that lack of awareness, perception of the entire reality of who you are, that wholeness, that complete divine being, creates the idea of these negative conditions or these things that we're resisting. We're going to unpack this today and more. So trying to ignore avoid, change, get rid of, or deny these conditions and appearances makes no sense. They are not there. So when you deny them, avoid them, change them, whatever, you put them there. You create that reality, right? You're trying to ignore, avoid, change, get rid of, or deny something that's not there. So when you do, you project it or you put it there. These conditions are not things in and of themselves, but they're the lack of something. And what is that lack? That's your awareness of who you really are, right? Lack doesn't exist, but you can, you can have that experience of lacking that awareness. It's imperfect seeing or imperfect perception. Do you see it? You, be, you believe, that this is what A Course in Miracles says about incomplete perception, or seeing what, what you believe are these negative conditions. You believe that what God created can be changed by your own mind. That what is perfect can be rendered imperfect or lacking. Such a powerful statement that with the Course of Miracles, what God created, you believe that you can change that by your own mind. Or that, that what is perfect can be, can be rendered imperfect or lacking. Wow, that's powerful. So, that's what Jesus, your I am awareness of being, remember what Jesus represents, the metaphysical meaning of Jesus 
Christ, the I am, your awareness, meant when he said, therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. You're not trying to be perfect. You are perfect. It's a statement of truth of your being. Your source, the Father, the Creator, is perfect. And therefore, his creations must also be perfect. Because I and the Father are one. That's what John 10.30 says. Yes, the Father is greater. The Father is greater than your 3D focus, your focus on the imperfection, your imperfect perception, your imperfect seeing, you seeing those unwanted, what you judge as unwanted conditions. That's where, why the Father is greater. But you are one with it, therefore you are also perfect. The Creator and its creations, the conceiver and its conceptions are one. A Course in Miracles says ideas leave not their source. Do you see it? To, that you have not left the Father. You're a perfect creation of it, right? That's powerful today. Master teacher Lester Levinson understood this when he said, you just know that everything is perfect. And then the slightest thought you will have quickly, the, the slightest thought you have will quickly come into being. He's talking about manifesting instantly. When you're in that gratitude, that state of knowing that you're source, that everything is perfect no matter what the appearances are showing you. That's powerful. Then everything must be unfolding perfectly. That's why in an early video I talked about an affirmation that it's perfect. It's unfolding perfectly. What Lester Levin would say, Lester Levinson would say, right? The whole idea of negative, unwanted, and undesired conditions and appearances becomes irrelevant. It becomes irrelevant. You're no longer, you're, you're now just allowing the perfection of all that is to unfold. In other words, as A Course in Miracles says, you no longer believe that you can distort the creations of God, including yourself. Wow. Right, because A Course in Miracles says, you believe that you can distort the creations of God, including yourself. But as, as you see everything is perfectly unfolding from within you, then you no longer believe that you can distort the creations of God, including yourself. You're seeing and perceiving, when you, when you believe you can distort the creations of God, when you believe there's unwanted to fix or change or overcome or get rid of, you're seeing and perceiving less than 0.1% of creation, infinity, and judging it. That distorts reality. You're looking at that less than 0.1% of physical manifested reality and judging it as wanted or unwanted, resisting it, trying to get rid of it, trying to change it, trying to influence it. That puts it there. That creates that whole experience. That distorts reality, as A Course in Miracles says. So here you are. Remember, this is infinity. That's the multidimensional you right here. That's your 3D experience. There you are, the physically focused you. Right? The Father and I are one, but the Father is greater than I. There you are, focused in on that point, less than 0.1% of seen reality. More than 99.9 is unseen. It's all real, though. It's all reality, right? Infinity, you as all that is, is remember, is holographic and non-local, meaning that every part of the whole contains the whole. That's what holographic means. Every part of it contains the whole. And, and, and therefore, that whole must be everywhere. So wherever you are, wherever God is, wherever infinity is, wherever all that is, is it all, the all of you, the all of God, the all of infinity, all of all that is, must be there. It's everywhere, all at once. That's the omnipresence of reality, of infinity, of you, all power, all knowing, everywhere, non-local and everywhere, holographic, that meaning in every part of the whole is all of God. So in that less than 0.1% that you're perceiving as incomplete, unfulfilled, not right, unwanted, maybe you're perceiving it as great as well, but none of it is the complete picture. All of it contains the entire infinity within it. Any part of infinity contains all of infinity. It, there's only unity, there's only wholeness. So all negative, unwanted, undesired conditions are a lack of the awareness of what's already there or the lack of awareness of who you really are. Do you see it? The lack of awareness that you are all that is, no matter what your focused, seen physical reality is. That's powerful today. So that's why it is said that manifesting in reality creation is not about the people and things. You know how we've said this many times. You are not creating, manifesting, or healing anything really. 
right? Rather, you're becoming more aware of yourself as source and therefore as reality itself. That's what reality creation manifesting in all of this is. It's you becoming more aware of you, you as all that is. That's what we're talking about. That's why often positive affirmations and trying to think and feel positively doesn't work because you're trying to change, get rid of, deny something that's not there, right? Or, or you're trying to manifest what's already there and has always been there. Either way, that, that's why those affirmations sometimes fall flat. But when you affirm from that knowing that there, there, are no, there is no lack that's actually there, there are, there are no negative conditions that are actually there, that you're, you're seeing it wrong, you're, you're remembering it wrong, you're incomplete seeing, incomplete perception, incomplete memory, then you, so, and then it doesn't matter. Now you're seeing the kingdom of heaven as it should be seen. It's all around you. Do you see it? So, so I want to say again, that's why positive affirmations or trying to think positively sometimes don't work because you're trying to change, get rid of or deny something that's there that you think, believe is there, but it's not there, right? It's not there. Those negative conditions are not there. Or you're trying to manifest what's already there, which is absolute fulfillment and absolute completion. So it doesn't matter how hard you try to affirm something is white when all you see is black. Do you see, you can get, that's why sometimes they don't work. You're, you're believing that it's black. You're seeing it that it's black, but you're trying to affirm that it's white. When really it is white and you're seeing the black, you're creating that lack. You're creating those conditions, right? So what can you do? That's always a question. What can I do? Remember, you manifest, create, attract, perceive, and experience as reality what you believe to be true about yourself. Who and what you're conscious of being, your self-concept. We've always talked about this. So what, so what do you want to do? Be more aware then of your true nature. Who you really are versus who in the world appears to be. Versus who you appear to be. Versus what the world appears to be. Be more aware of who you really are, your true essence. I am means you exist and will always exist as part of and at the same time all that is, holographic, non-local. So you're, you're always appearing. Now, we're going to talk about how you do this. How do you become more aware? We're going to show you this, right? But I am means you exist and will always exist as part of, and at the same time, all of all that is. Holographic and non-local. Wherever God is at all, all of God is. All of infinity. Wherever infinity is at all, all of infinity is. Wherever you are at all, all of infinity is. All power. Right? That utter worthiness, that utter fulfillment, that absolute unconditional love, perfect like the Father who, who you already are. And that translates into a state of being of absolute unconditional gratitude and love. Because that's your true state. So we translate that into these elevated emotions or feelings of gratitude and love. But that's your true state. That's your essence. You could only feel unworthy because you're utterly worthy. You could only feel unfulfilled or have that experience because you're utterly fulfilled. Otherwise, you couldn't have that experience. Very powerful today. So it's beyond mere appreciation. We talked about gratitude in a, a couple videos, big ones, right? And I know some people brought up Abraham Hicks who says appreciation's less resistance and all of that, but you're watering down gratitude. It's a different thing. All of them talk about that being less resistance. All that talk about that it's better to do that than feel gratitude. That's just, that's as Abraham Hicks would say, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that's what Abraham, I'm using her own words. Blah, blah, blah. Grat Stop watering down gratitude. Gratitude's the ultimate essence of state of being of who you are. It's, if you're creating, if that's resistance with you, that's a lower mind creation. There is no resistance there. And appreciation doesn't capture gratitude. Gratitude is your ultimate essence. Just like my client who said she just feels like she is gratitude, not for any reason. She's just feeling that, that she is source. That's what we're talking about there. The gratitude we're talking about is wholly unconditional. It's not, even appreciation is a conditional. I appreciate, you have to appreciate this or appreciate that. It's conditioned on something. 
But gratitude, that whole state, it's a part of your core essence. Nothing wrong with appreciation. I just want to say that. But I'm saying it doesn't have to take the place of gratitude because you believe it's less resistance. That's just all blah, blah, blah right? That's just all getting lower. That's all getting down in the middle, the messy middle, right? Gratitude implies fulfillment because gratitude is fulfillment. So when you become more aware of who you really are, then you invoke and realize the gratitude within you. It's beyond the mere appreciation, right? It's a state of being. It's more than a mere 3D emotion or feeling of being grateful or appreciating something for something. It's your core essence. That's what feeling it real means. Feel that core essence of gratitude that you are, of the love that you are. That's what we're talking about here. So much more than that other, that other talk. So feeling gratitude just because you are, you exist, I am, creates the image or memory of absolute fulfillment of all your wishes being fulfilled, of all your dreams coming true. That's what feeling gratitude in the, in the, in, in the 3D experience creates, right? But feel the gratitude because you exist and will always exist, right? That's the only condition that matters because it's absolute existence. No other conditions matter, just the conditions of existence, that you are that source. So gratitude is source. Right? That creates a memory or an image of absolute fulfillment. That's why scripture in John 8, 8 said, Before Abraham, I am. Before any condition, physical or non-physical, there's absolute fulfillment and love and gratitude of I am. Before any of it, your gratitude, your love. Gratitude is more than a mere 3D feeling or emotion of being grateful right? for something. It's the master key and state of, being, uh, state of being to manifest and create, receive and perceive all that you desire. Hear it again. So gratitude is more than a mere 3D feeling and emotion of being grateful or appreciating something. For being grateful for something or appreciating something. It's the master key and state of being to manifest and create, receive and perceive all that you desire. Like this one client's experiencing. Everything is perfect and unfolding for her, right? That's powerful. So it's bigger. I want to say it again. It's bigger than what the Abe Hicks and Rhonda Byrne and The Greatest Secret and the others are talking about. All, those, all of those are powerful messages, right? You know I'm a, I'm a fan of all of those. I've talked about uh, The Greatest Secret. I've talked about Abraham Hicks' teachings. I've talked about all the greats. But the message here is bigger than that. Right? They're, all, they're all powerful messages. But as Abe Hicks says in her own words, blah, 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 with this talk about appreciation and, and the difference between gratitude and appreciation, we're talking about an eternal state of being, who you are. There's an eternal, visible, unseen link between the physical manifested reality, your 3D world experience, and the unseen, non-physical source that you are. And that link is unconditional gratitude and love. Hear it again. That's what we're talking about. It's a link. It's a metaphysical link. There's an eternally visible, unseen link between the physical manifested reality, your 3D experience, and the unseen, non-physical source that you are. And that link is unconditional love and gratitude. In Matthew 13, 12, it says this, For whoever has to him shall more be given. Whoever has what? Whoever has the awareness of being, whoever has that, lo- that awareness that they are love, that they are gratitude, that they are source, more will be given. And he shall have an abundance. But whoever does not have that awareness of being source, that awareness of being love, that awareness of being gratitude, feeling that innate essence, What he has shall be taken away from him. In other words, you become less and less aware of your true nature and who you really are. Do you see that? Right? As we we identify with the changing 3D conditions. As we identify with the changing 3D conditions, then what we have probably manifested to have our life, we, we start not seeing that because we're getting caught in the conditions that we get less awareness of who we really are. That's powerful. 
That's what Matt, that they're talking about in Matthew 13, 12. That's what Jesus is talking about. Whoever has that awareness of being, that love and gratitude, they will have an abundance. But whoever doesn't have that, whoever's less aware, whoever's getting caught in the 3D conditions, right? Getting, getting, fighting those, trying to get rid of them, trying to improve them, trying to influence them. You'd be less aware of who you really are in your true nature. And then it would be that, that, you lose that awareness. Wow, that's powerful. So, and, and then in 2 Kings 3, 16, 17, I've talked about this in other videos. This is about the three kings and their armies being, being in the desert, dying of thirst. And they asked the Lord or, I, or, or one of the prophets, Isaiah, for help, right? And thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. They're in the desert, right? They, he's telling them to pick up a shovel and dig, right? No rain in sight, right? You shall not see wind or, or shall you see rain, yet the valley will be filled with water. Very powerful message. In other words, dig the ditch, the, 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 create the image of gratitude and fulfillment. Don't wait, don't condition it on the rain or the, right? The rain's already there. The fulfillment's already there. Everything you want's already there, but dig the ditch. Feel that innate gratitude, regardless of what you see or don't see out there. That's the true meaning of faith. That's what Neville Goddard meant by faith does not give reality to that which is unseen. Faith is loyalty to the unseen reality. Meaning the rain is already there. The water is already there. But if you don't dig the ditch, you don't experience it. It's there for you. God, God doesn't, God, there's no quid pro quo here. But, you, but for you to experience it, God gave it to you. But you've got you've to dig the ditch. You've got to move to that gratitude and that fulfillment that you are to experience it. That's what they mean by loyalty to the unseen reality, right? In other words, the rain or water or fulfillment is already there. It's yours. It's your God-given right. You were born with it. I am that I am. Be grateful and dig the ditch, right? I've talked about that, that uh, in Scripture a couple times. And I've also talked about this one in John 14, 2, 3. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. I talked about this in the idea, of, in, the, in the light of Neville Goddard's teachings, and, and I've unpacked this many times in many different ways. But today I want to talk about it in a different way and say, look, that when you prepare a place, you're preparing it with gratitude. You prepare a place or dig the ditch that now must be filled with all your desires and wishes. When you move to that gratitude and love of being, that I amness, of just feeling that gratitude anyway, you create that ditch or that place, you prepare that place that now must be filled with your desires and your wishes. Remember, the universe abhors a vacuum. But there are no vacuums in infinity. There's no vacuums in the kingdom of God. There's no vacuum, vacuums in ultimate reality or all there is. It's always just filled with love and gratitude. So when you prepare your place, when you dig the ditch by standing in that absolute state of being, unconditional gratitude, unconditional love that you are, it must be filled with everything you desire. Right? Again, we're not talking about conjuring necessarily uh, temporary 3D feelings of gratitude and love. We're saying it's your state of being. We're saying recognize that conviction within, that that is who you are. And then, wow, watch as that world changes. Metaphysical manifesting secret to transform all negative conditions. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on the videos. Thank you for being part of our Facebook group, the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful for joining us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen for joining our TikTok at Be Something Wonderful. We're all over on all social media, either at Tom Karen or at Be Something Wonderful. You can find us. We also have an organization page on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful. And we have a membership channel that has additional content and live streams nearly once a month. We're going to have our next live stream, our second of 2024, to be broadcast exclusively on the Be Something Wonderful membership channel, where you send your questions to us at info at besomethingwonderful.com. We're going to have one scheduled for this month in February. Stay tuned for the date. 
If you're a member of the channel, thank you for being a member. Thank you for joining. If you haven't, check it out. There's a link below. Creators with great love, with great light and infinite gratitude. This is Tom Karen in the studios here of Be Something Wonderful in Las Vegas. Until next time, we'll see you soon.